And welcome to Klaus to the Heart Live on ONTV. I'm Jason Klaus. We certainly appreciate you taking time out of your Friday night here to, to give this show a watch. I'm very excited about this show. Uh, coming back here as a return guest here, my friend Q, Quadell Edwards. It's great to have you back on the show, brother. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. You know, the one thing, <laughs> you know, a little <laughs> bit of, of a backstory is um, when, I, when I figured out what I wanted to talk about here this month on, on ON TV, because we're coming up to the holiday here ne next Thursday, um, I couldn't think of anybody else that I wanted to talk about this, partic this particular topic with than with you. And, uh, like, I don't think I got the whole question out before you're like, yes, I'm in. I'm 100% <laughs> in. And I'm like, well, let me tell you the date. Doesn't matter. I, I will be there. <laughs> so, look, we got a lot of positive feedback from your last appearance on here. And not just from, from people that we, that we know or that we work with, but there were fans of the brand that watch the show, like they watch – everything that we do they listen to all the podcasts they were in some of them were in Lapeer last week for for the live show which I greatly appreciated um, but man the the feedback and just like you blew people away with your story and it was such a huge thing for me because I knew it would resonate I just mm -hmm. didn't think it would resonate across the board like that you know what I'm saying <laughs> so um, before we get into this this month's show, because this is a little bit different than the last time, because I've kind of changed the the format a little bit, more of a, more of a natural podcast thing instead of a Q and A type of of interview. I feel like it flows better, right? Right, right. So, what kind of feedback did did you have from your first appearance here on, on ON TV? Oh, uh, well, pretty much just like you said. Uh there was a lot of people that was stopping me and saying, uh, oh man, I really enjoyed the, uh, the stories you were telling on, that, uh, on the show. And uh, even um, last week at the uh, live show, I was stopped. I was stopped and I'm like, okay, I don't wanna get the celebrity <laughs> head on me right now, but uh, I was like, wow, okay, well, if I'm able to impact people with my story, then hey, it's awesome, it's an awesome thing. So it, I enjoyed it, it. It, it. That's cool. I didn't know that, you know. <laughs> um, so that 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 is very cool, and that's just. I mean, it's it's a testament to the power that you really have. I mean, we talked about it when you were here uh, back in August, and it was like, man, this guy has is such a breath of fresh air, right? Because you and I, we have a lot in common. In terms, I mean, well, well for one, we're, we're, we're wrestling fans, and we are going to talk about that later on awesome. here in the program. I know, I know you're excited <laughs> about it. Because uh, anytime we, we, we can sit and talk pro wrestling, we're 100% on board, oh, right? Yeah. But, um, you know, we have the same outlook in, in which we really want to focus more on the more positive things in life, the silver lining. I mean, anybody who listens to any of my shows knows I'm such a huge you know, pr proponent of that. Yes. You know, all the negativity, and I mean, we can go on and on about about all that. But at the same time, you know, you and I, we we have good conversations, and they're uplifting conversations. Right. And, right. Um, especially in this time of year, because we're very much coming into the holiday season. Thanksgiving is is next Thursday. Yep. And knowing that we were coming here. Here tonight, live on ON TV, just you know, less than a week away from from this holiday. For a lot of people, you know, this is their favorite holiday, and for a variety of reasons, it could be the impressive spread that everybody lays out for for the dinner. It could be watching football. It could be a number of different things. But I find that by and large, it's that connection with your loved ones, yep. with your friends, with your family, this type of thing. And the whole basis of this holiday, at least in my mind, and, and, and I realize in this day and age, a lot of what I like to call the basic fundamentals in life mm -hmm. are very much overlooked. 
you know, with the, with the advent of technology and all these right. capabilities that we have, we have these platforms to express ourselves now. Um, you know, like with anything else, there's a right way and a wrong way to do things. Right, but right. for me, and I'm sure with you too, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure you will, um, I feel like the basis of this holiday is, yes, it is to not only gather with your friends, with your family mm -hmm. at this time of year, um, but more importantly, man, it's, it's, it's to acknowledge the blessings that we have in our life. And I'm not talking exclusively on a religious level because it's it doesn't have to be regulated to just a religious thing you can right, right. You, we are blessed in so many ways mm -hmm. with the good fortunes that we have in our lives now do you feel like and you know maybe it's just it, it's just the way that i look at things or the things that i'm exposed to either in my real life my real life com you know conversations or what I see on, on social media but do you feel like the basis for Thanksgiving is that connection with family and friends it is counting your blessings do you have another layer to, you know to this or does this mean something more across the board well I'm gonna say all of the above on that um, but definitely um, it's, it's the time spent with loved ones and uh, even people that you haven't seen before or, or haven't seen in a while, you know, and I was actually reading a poll, um, not, man, not too uh, long ago, that was saying that uh, Thanksgiving, there's 80% of Americans gather with people they don't like. So uh, this is the time where you get with the people that you might not even be fond of, but uh, you start to build on relationships, not only with your loved ones, but on with the people that you might not see eye to eye with. And, you know, because uh, relationships is very important. Yeah. And it's not that you got to be with so-and-so all the time, but this is a time where we can all get together and be thankful for what we do have because there's a lot of people that's not here anymore. And uh, and that's the way I see it, because uh, I lost someone about two months ago. You know, I lost a very close uncle of mine. So, uh, you know, and he was expected to be at the dinner. Sure. So it, th these are times that we need to be able to cherish one another and even people that we might not even see on a regular basis. So I, I feel like it's very important that it's really the relationship aspect of it for me you know that we all get together no matter what you eat you eat turkey or whatever your traditions are um, you know but once you get the relationships get everybody together and just enjoy each other's presence without bickering without the arguing and everything but if we can enjoy each other oh man imagine how your emotions will feel you know because a lot of us deal with we're dealing with the loss by some people deal with the loss by not getting with the people that's still here yeah so if we get with the people that's still here then we're not gonna have to worry about regrets when some of those people aren't here anymore so i think it's very important to cherish the time with people cherish your time with your loved ones cherish time with people while you still can you know I always say give people their flowers while they can still smell them. So always get together with the people while you still can, you know, because you, next year is not promised. This, this, could, this could be the it, you know. Right. This is, a, this is Thanksgiving. So think of the name. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the name. So we got to be gracious for each other and, you know, and just enjoy the presence, man. You bring up a very good point that I hadn't even taken into consideration because – it's not something that by and large I have a lot of experience in and that is being part of a family dynamic or a gathering of something like that mm -hmm. with members of the family that you may not see eye to eye. There's some sort of heat be between the two of you or right. just, you know, and a lot of that is based solely on what we believe, what we think is right, what we think is wrong. In this day and age, it, it's it's a variety of things. It's mm -hmm. who you vote for. It's right, where you right. stand on a pandemic and how that you know that's being handled. 
you know, because, I mean, especially last year, you know, when we were kind of coming out of that real big first wave of, of COVID, like a lot of people stayed isolated within their their households or, right. or whatever, and they didn't have that opportunity to together with friends and family Some because still are. Yeah, I, you, you're absolutely right <laughs> about that. But back to your point is when you are, you know, in a house or some sort of venue with, you know, your extended family, mm -hmm. you're, you know, because there's so many dynamics and so many layers to a relationship, you know, and you're not always going to see eye to eye you should be able at least for the course of a day right. to, to put those differences to the side burner and mm -hmm. just enjoy the fact that you guys, number one, you're, you're all in one place at one time. You are by and large, you know, as healthy as you can be. And like you said, it's, it's being thankful for these people that are here. We're, regardless if, if you have regular contact with them or you see eye to eye with them or not. Right. Um, look, if anything has proven anything out of the shadow of a doubt is we are, ne like you said, we are never guaranteed, you know, t a tomorrow. You know, it could be over within. Right, right within a heartbeat for, yeah. the, for the lack of better terms. So um, having gone through multiple holiday seasons, like I told you before we came on the air here, it's been like three out of the last four years, we've had to endure that first holiday season without a significant loved one in our mm -hmm. family. Um, and it's very difficult to, to deal with and I know like some of the viewers that are watching us here tonight live, they're dealing with that. They've right. lost a significant person in, in their family very recently. They're coming up to this first holiday season without that person at the dinner table. And like if that doesn't put what the true meaning of life in perspective is, I don't know what will. Right. Because right. I feel like we take, we take time for for granted. I feel like, like all oh, we, absolutely, we've got all the time oh, in the world. We can, we'll wait till tomorrow. We'll do yep. this. Look, there is no guarantee that yeah. tomorrow's coming, right? It's no guarantee at all. I mean, and you hit it on the, you hit it right there, man, with that time thing, man. Time is expiring. You know, it, it, everything has an expiration date. You know, so that's why I say always maximize each and every moment you have with everyone that you have contact with, you know? And, and it's, it's so crazy because uh, th we're, we're living in a social media world, but yet this era, this time is like the most loneliest time, you know? People feel so lonely despite having Facebook and Instagram and all these other um, platforms. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, and it's crazy because I was reading another, another survey talking about how lonely um, this generation is. This is a very lonely generation, and that's why you see a lot on Facebook, you know, because people <laughs> people are, are, are looking for that attention. So that's why I cherish the people that you do have. How much of, of social media plays a role in that in, in, in terms of especially the younger you know, oh, the man. younger genre of the population, like they are being raised on the social media platforms yeah. as their primary source of communication. Oh, absolutely. We have forgotten <laughs> how to communicate with individuals yep. face to face. Yep. Sitting behind a keyboard <laughs> and letting your thumbs do the talking is not necessarily the the best course of action, right? Because in our minds, we have this sense of invincibility. Like whatever mm -hmm. I say, because I'm here, and whatever I'm typing out is 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 directed or meant to be seen by somebody that's 50 miles away. Right. There's no repercussions. <laughs> so when we get into a face-to-face -face environment, 
there's that awkwardness because you don't really know how to communicate what you're feeling. Because mm -hmm. look, I have I have had a real issue over the course of my life up until somewhat recently. Like I didn't like relaying my feelings in a person in a face to face situation because when I had previously, it had been used against me. Right. And right. You know, when you're toying with somebody's feelings, that's as vulnerable as you're going to get, mm -hmm. right? Um, yep. But back on topic with, with the holiday as a whole, this is the time that, you know, by and large, theoretically, we want to give, we want to acknowledge our blessings, we want to give thanks. And I, for a lot of us, like, because of, of that ambiance, that aura that comes with, with the holiday season, not just, you know, Thanksgiving, but we got, you know, Christmas and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and all kinds of, of other holidays that are on the horizon here in the next few days and weeks, um, you know, they, they get so wrapped up in, in that mood. You know, right, and, yeah. and, and a lot of times it is, you know, people our age that when we grew up, there was still very much that that emphasis on family time, on friends time, and you just have the feelings of love and togetherness. And like, like there are things, when you look back on your childhood, you look at the different, like the, the, the traditions that went into play, like you mm -hmm. can smell a pumpkin pie being baked and, you, and that Ooh. takes you right back to, you know, to your oh, mom's yeah. house, oh, right? Yeah. Or, oh, my grandma made the best turkey and whenever yep. I smell turkey, it takes me right back yep. to the Trigger, farmhouse. Triggers that memory. Yeah, yeah, it does, right? <laughs> yep. Um, you know, I feel like a lot is, I mean, we're, a lot of people, and I shouldn't, you know, categorize this across the board because I realize that is not the case, but the ones that are most vocal on any public platform, you can tell they're lacking that. They're, they've mm -hmm. la they are lacking that connection, that emotional, and in some cases, psychological connection to what the true meaning of the holidays is if it's right. something like the smell of a turkey that yeah. takes you back to that happy time that happy feeling you know that's that's a basic fundamental man mm -hmm. because that's organic that was right. not manufactured right. right so i the thing that i see is yes we come together we we celebrate this holiday we acknowledge our blessings here and now mm -hmm. And we will acknowledge them and we will go above and beyond to try to spread goodwill and sometimes cheer, you know, during this holiday season, regardless of what holiday that it, that it is that you celebrate. Um, but once we get past like, like New Year's Day, <laughs> oh, it man. seemingly becomes almost cliche and passe, right. right? Yeah. Why is this? You know what? people get caught up in the, the, the mood of the holidays and, and they get caught up. And it's, it's crazy because uh, I can go on and on about how Thanksgiving is now set up. It's, it's been changed <laughs> for us for not, and not for the better, you know. Right. Uh, what, what I see now is, and, and you kind of, you hit on it too, you know, you got Thanksgiving, so you're giving thanks and then you're giving back, you know, you're giving that cheer to somebody that needs it. But what we see now is, Thanksgiving coming, people are planning to shop. Yeah. <laughs> Thanksgiving is no longer Thanksgiving because people are looking at Black Friday. Yeah. So I, I feel like people are kind of throwing out the traditions of what Thanksgiving used to be. They're throwing out the traditions of the family gatherings and the and you know the smelling of the pie and the turkey, which ooh, I can taste now. Right. But uh, people are throwing that aside because now people want to get. People don't want to give, they want to get. So now Black Friday, that offers a lot of get. Yeah. <laughs> so you got this sale, that sale, and now Black Friday has been extended into Thursdays. I was just going to mention that. <laughs> and I, look, I have had a huge problem with that for the last, and, and, and it seems like it hasn't been a thing except for the last four or five years yeah. where they started to um, 
kind of jumpstart those yep. Black Friday sales yep. onto the day of the holiday. And I have a huge problem with this. And I have made no bones about the fact that any any company, any store, anything like this that opens their doors and and expects their employees to take that time away from their family mm -hmm. to work that why does it have to be that night? Exactly. You, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's not that important. These sales are not that important. And I and, and I say that from this side because I don't own a, like I don't right. own Walmart. Right. I don't own Target. I don't own these companies that manufacture these goods and this is what makes their year like i'm not saying i don't want anybody to not make a living for themselves right right but i find that in this day and age especially now man if you don't have basic the basic foundation of a happy employee you're only going to do so much right you're only going to get because <laughs> oh, how many times how many people have taken time out of their own holiday their own time with their family to go to the store to you know to ensure that these employees have to be there right so they're taking you know they're being taken away from their families for what the almighty dollar almighty dollar and that's sad very it, sad and i i maintain man i i would never ever go to a store on thanksgiving day it just yes. isn't going to happen if 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 i don't have it on that day I don't need it exactly. because if I needed it, I would have taken the initiative to get it before Thursday, right? Yep. Yep. So it's like you're saying, it's we're losing our focus on what is most important. Now, I'm all about, you know, the Black Friday thing. Like, I get that. But because I, I can remember on Thursday, on Thursday morning, um, I would go to the gas station or or whatever. Now, have I having just laid all that out about the WalMarts <laughs> and stuff like that? I do realize that you know because people travel, mm -hmm. you know, going to to you know Aunt May's house or or what have you. All right. You know, you kind of have have to have your gas stations open. You know, God forbid if, if something was happening, you ran out of gas. Right. You're stranded for yeah. hours and yeah, hours and true. hours. So. On that aspect, I kind of, I can, I can be okay with it, and by and large, people that go into that kind of work, and I guess by and large, they can with, with your, with your box stores too, but it doesn't have to be. It's not right. a necessity to go buy a TV on Thursday morning <laughs> because it's $50, you know, off than what, what it usually is. Exactly, yeah. Um, but I would go get the newspaper that had all your Black Friday ads. Uh -huh. So we, you know, we made a thing to where, you know, we would split up the sales ads after dinner or in the morning before dinner, before everybody came over. Mm -hmm. And we start mapping out, okay, so we need to be here. We want to get this, <laughs> we yeah. need to get that. And then it, it took me back. And when everything started to f filter into the day of Thanksgiving, I'm like, this getting, is wrong. It's, it's getting out of hand. It's getting out of hand. And it's not getting any better. Right. I Well, I shouldn't say that because a couple of, of the stores have since said, okay, we're not going to be open on Thursday anymore. Right. And I, yeah. So for yeah. those people, I uh, you, you've earned my respect in my business. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because right. I, I'm more apt to spend my money on, on, on a company that does have some value of their employees their happiness right. and their time with their families yeah. right because it ain't going to be on walmart <laughs> or you know whoever but um i just feel like as far as encountering and acknowledging our blessings we really need to not just focus on one day or one season of the year what can we do to make this a constant thought to mm -hmm. to to continue to spread the goodwill the you know the yeah. love and all of this stuff that goes along with this particular time of year what can we do q to to make this an all year thing man they, you got to keep those memories alive man you really got to keep those memories alive and and, and just don't it, to me it seemed like once uh 
people start getting into the new year and they're doing their new year's resolutions and everything even the resolution the new year's resolutions don't even last it's, it seems like once we get past january 15th whatever <laughs> you have uh tried to do or wanted to do for the new year it's already out the window right because you might you might have been hit with a some issues or some people are still recovering from how much money they spent from uh christmas you know or they're 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 dealing with this and they're dealing with that and that's and and the problem is you know once we start dealing with troubles in january and we start forgetting about what happened in december and 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 november you know we start giving the trouble and the situations that we're in so much power that it just we just can't handle it you know and we start to focus on other stuff because once you come off focus, it's hard to get back on focus. And I always think about like a cameraman, you know, you got to do all of this stuff to focus on one thing, but they're focusing on it because they can see the way it's supposed to look. Right. See, but we're, we're not looking at the way it's supposed to look because we start looking at the issues that's blocking the, 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 the focus, you know. So we, we start to do this and do that and we're all over the place. So. Sometimes our troubles, our situations knock us right off of our, 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 our traditional memory of, of, of gratitude, you know, um, you know, from the holidays. In the holidays, we're not even thinking about the holidays anymore. No, you know, it's uh, so far <laughs> in the rear view, or, you know, rear view mirror. Yeah. But at the same, t- you know, in reality, it's just, it's less than a handful of weeks ago. Exactly. Where, yeah. where <laughs> it's not that deep. I, I guess... I talked. I, I talked about this at at the first um, live show that I did in Frankenmuth because it it was on January the fifth that that year. Oh, okay. And okay. like I, you know, I said, how many made a New Year's resolution? Because we're, you know, it was very very early in the new year. Right. And you know, all, j- just about every, every hand went up, and mm-hmm. I was like, well, how many of you expect to maintain? Well, of course, all. All hands went up. Yeah, I I can do this. You know what I mean? Right. So then I had them think back to last year, or you know the 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 previous year, and it's like, okay, how many made a resolution? Hands went up. How many kept on? Mm. I think maybe two. Wow. You know, that's why I maintain. I don't make resolutions. Yeah, me neither. I make goals. Yeah, yeah. I set goals, and I know you're very much a goal-oriented person. Absolutely. So, because I felt like with, and I know we're getting off the topic of Thanksgiving, <laughs> we're going more we into all, New Year's, but it kind of all ties in together. Yeah, it does, yeah. Because we can sit here and make a, re- a resolution that I'm going to spend more time with friends, you know, with friends, with family. I'm going to make more time for me, for this, for that, for the other. But, you know, we're all so busy and we all have yep. a variety of things happening and it's easy to lose track of time. Easy. Because it all it all goes back to, well, I've got all the time in the world. No, we don't. We're on borrowed time. No matter what your situation mm-hmm. is. You could be healthy as a horse. You could be a millionaire. You could be, you know, working 90 hours a week. All right. 2020 was proof of that. You got that right. <laughs> 2020 opened our eyes to so many aspects. And a lot of it can be under this umbrella of we have taken life for granted. Absolutely. And I felt like, and you know, we before we came on the air here, we were talking to 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 our friend Joe, who is uh, you know directing the show here tonight. You know, like he. You know, I, and I did too. We felt like you know we were going to come out of of this COVID thing, and everybody was going to be arm in arm. Right. Like, okay, we made it through, and you know we we're going to mourn the ones that we lost, but those of us we we came out of this thing, we're stronger. <coughs> Pardon me. That's not the case. Not at all. So. Not at all. I feel like also, <coughs> you can tell that's when I when I start getting worked up because my my voice starts going for <laughs> for whatever reason, but uh, I feel like a lot of people, when we, when we make make an effort to try to to strengthen our bond with our friends or with our loved ones, to really put the emphasis back on 
what things like Thanksgiving was really meant to be. Mm -hmm. They need a starting point. Like in their mind, they, they need that starting date that they can look back on and said, this is the day that I changed my life. Yep. Or this is the day that I made the first step to get to where I want to be or who right. I, I want to be. And that's the good thing about, you know, things like the holidays because it does set, it, it, does, it does present itself with a concrete date. Right. And, you know, yeah. But I can look back on on Thanksgiving of 2021, and this is the day that I said, "Enough is enough," and I need to focus less on what's going on in the world around me. That, by and large, I have no control over. So, why in the hell am I going to let that you know dictate what kind of mood or what kind of person I'm going to be? Like, I know who I want to be. Right. Right. And a lot of that. A lot of our successes, a lot of the way we look at things, a lot, a, a lot of our moods, all depends on who we surround ourselves with. Oh, that's important, isn't it? <laughs> oh my God, that's important. And as as we sit here and say that, somebody at home, may be, you know, maybe like, well, duh, you know, it's well, that's easy enough, or it's, it becomes cliche. Right, right. If it's so easy, why is it not being right. utilized? Exactly. So. Yeah. Maybe it's so cliche that people <laughs> don't even realize, you know, what they got around them, you know? And, and you, it's like, show me your friends. I can, I can see exactly how you are, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's important to surround yourself. If you want to be successful, get around successful people. Absolutely. Get around successful people, you know? And uh, don't, don't, and, and I always use myself, I use myself as an example, you know? I used to be an alcoholic. I used to drink a lot. So if I surround myself with a bunch of, other alcoholics i'm not gonna come out of that right you know I, I can dig right deeper into my my, my issues so that's why you always got to surround yourself with people that's going to uplift you and it's always you know it's not bad to have someone that that you can pull up yeah you know i always say have somebody to pull you up and always have somebody down here to for, that you can pull up you know it <laughs> it's, like, it's like a chain, right? Yeah. And not only that, but it provides motivation. It keeps you going because when when you're pulling somebody up, it releases these these thoughts, these feelings in our brain and in 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 our heart that we're making a positive difference. We're doing something worthwhile yeah. that is not necessarily be benefiting me monetarily or anything like that like there is no prestige right. uh, now along those lines Q and I'm sure you you have seen this because with the holidays and especially with Thanksgiving you see a lot of organizations in our neighborhoods and our communities that are putting things in place to help out the less fortunate yes a lot of these a lot of these or organizations are ran and utilized by volunteers. Now, I think it's a tremendous thing that if you have the time and you have the means and the effort that you can help, you know, people in your community by working, a, you know, working a dinner or something, like, you know, like that, that allows people that may not have had an opportunity to have that experience of a home cooked meal or what whatever the case may be i mean that's that's absolutely fantastic and that is a testament to who you are as an individual and the size of your heart and the amount of love that you have not just for yourself but for other people what a concept right. i understand again one one of those things that seems to be lost here you yeah, know, yeah and, a lot of people don't think about that but what drives me nuts bro what drives me nuts is when I go on to Facebook or whatever and I see so and so checked in at the soup kitchen. Oh yeah, I see. And what are they yeah. doing? Yeah. They're 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 taking yeah. selfies of somebody with somebody who's getting a meal. Right, yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. Is that what this That's is all about? <laughs> because you want you want you want to to present yourself and portray yourself as some hero. Right. I got news yeah. for you. Not all heroes wear masks and capes. There are people who walk among us every day who do amazing things to help those in and around their lives that we have no idea about. Right. Because they're they're not out there, you know, posting s selfies with, 
you know, the less fortunate and what, what, what's supposed to be something that is met with kindness and compassion and all this, man, there, it becomes a thing where it becomes like a social standing. Look right. how great I am. Right, right. I see that and I think, what a butthole you are. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe yeah, I'm understand. off my rocker. I, you, you know, I I'm with you there, man, because uh, <laughs> I, I, I really don't understand why people want the, uh, I think it's a social media thing, you know. Sure. I think that, that, that definitely goes into it, too, because they want all the clicks. They want all the people to, 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 to give them the recognition. You know, that's what they want. They want that recognition. And How many thumbs up <laughs> can I get? Yeah, How many comments that say, <laughs> you are awesome, and yep. you, you make such, such a great difference. Now, I am very much like, whenever I do something that resonates with, with somebody, Mm -hmm. whether it's something small or something monumental because like I've been told that I I've changed people's lives that makes me feel uncomfortable to a, a degree because and when they put that on social media mm -hmm. like like I'm glad that I made a difference in your life but I don't need that kind of recognition. Right, I I don't right. need 115 people to hit the like button or tell me, "Oh, you're so great, you're so great" because I I feel weird because I feel like I have been put on in in this platform to where like I'm begging for that attention and mm -hmm. I certainly am not. Like I do this, we do this because we want to make a positive difference in people's lives. We want to give you guys an opportunity to maybe think in a different way. If right. you're if you're dealing with something that is less than ideal, you know, maybe we have something from our experiences that can help you along the way. That's our thanks, right? right? I mean, yeah, is that is, is that how you operate? Yeah, that's it. That's it, man. I I don't need no credit. I don't do it for credit. I don't do it for, I, I, my thanks is for you to get on a nice and a positive track, you know. Yeah. I, I, that's what I want to see. I want to see results. Yeah. I want to see results. I don't want to see, I don't want to see you dead. Right. Pretty much, you know. I, and and I, that's why I want to see people survive and I want to see people thrive. And it's not for me to take credit for, you know, where you're going in life, you know, because that's, I don't want to take credit for that. Right. You know, so that's why I say I, I do things behind the scenes, man. I, I've never been a been a in your face type of guy, you know. But if I'm if I'm needed, then I'm there. Right, absolutely. That's I feel like that's the way, and, and that's the way me and my wife we, we're both like that. You know, my wife she she went to those soup kitchens mm -hmm. and uh, she went last year, but uh, you know we did, we took no pictures. We right. took no pictures. We didn't even tell anybody. So it's and, and it's a, it's it's crazy because. Uh, and I'm going to share this quick story. Um, we were in Detroit. We came from a family gathering, and we had a, oh, my goodness, we had a big old plate of food boxed up. Man, I couldn't wait to break into that food, man, I'm telling you. But uh, we got to a red light in Detroit. And uh, and it was, it, I had a feeling in my heart when I seen this young lady that was uh, out on the, on the side of the road. And I'm not telling this for credit, but, uh, but you know, I seen this young lady on the side of the road, and... Uh, she, she was, you know, she had to sign. It was, it was Thanksgiving night. Okay. It was Thanksgiving night. So uh, I handed her the entire box of food and I had no regret from it. And there was nothing in my heart that said, oh man, you got to go tell people what I just did. I got, I feel, I feel like I would get a lot of credit for this one. I'm, I'm, I might get a lot of uh, likes on Facebook on this one. None of that. Not, I, I have absolutely no urge to take credit for doing good because I believe that it's going to come around to me anyway. Right. You know, good things happen to good people. Mm -hmm. Good things happen to good people, and you don't have to validate yourself for that good thing to happen. Right. All you got to do is you continue to be good, and it's going, it's, you, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. I tell people that they're going to be all right, and I know that I'm going to be all right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's perfectly said, and along those lines, you know, you, do, you don't need that recognition, and if you want to thank me, like, like you were saying, you know, do good, be good, this, that, and the other yep. thing. My thing is, 
and I and I'm right I'm right there with you. But you know, if you want to truly you know, thank me for for something that I brought that improved your situation, your life, your mood, whatever the case may be, pass it on. Pass it on. Pay it forward. Yep. Look look for an, an opportunity to make a difference in somebody else's life. You know, um, and it doesn't have to be monumental. It doesn't have to be earth shattering. It could be the smallest of gestures, but it mm -hmm. makes the biggest of, of impacts on an individual's life. Because at the end of the day, Q, we don't know what we're, you know, we don't, I don't know what you go through on a daily basis. You don't know what I go through. We don't know what anybody else is going through. Right. Because not everybody wears their emotions on their sleeves and not everybody documents everything on some public platform. Right, right. You know, a, a, a lot of us will, you know, we swallow those, 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 those issues, those challenges, those, in, those inner demons and or what, whatever the case may be for a, a variety of reasons. It could mm -hmm. be because we don't want to be a burden. We don't want our feelings used against us. I mean, like I said, you, you could tell <laughs> how much that burned me because I, I use that as, as an example pretty regularly, but, um, this is, there's so much potential with this holiday for it to be, um, so much more than what it is. Let's right. get back to the basics. Let's right. get back to the foundations of what this holiday was made for. Yep to give thanks, to appreciate our loved ones, to mm -hmm. spend time with, with our loved ones, and um, really embrace what is truly important in life. This is your chance to hit the reset button. Absolutely. Could not have said that any better. So what we're going to do right now, we are going to run a quick timeout, and when we return, we are going to discuss, I would imagine, what's going to be one of our favorite a traditions of this time of year. So stick around more of Klaus to the Heart live on ONTV is right after this time out. The Orion Lighted Christmas Parade returns to downtown Lake Orion on Saturday, December 4th at 6 p.m. This year's theme is Christmas in Toyland and parade participants and downtown businesses are encouraged to light up the night Marching bands, costume characters, and colorful floats will make their way down Broadway Street in the heart of the village. And of course, Santa and Mrs. Claus will be bringing up the rear as they usher in the holiday season. Again, the Orion Area Parade Group invites you to come out for the 2021 Lighted Christmas Parade on December 4th at 6 p.m. For more information, visit OrionLightedParade.com or follow them on Facebook for the most recent updates. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas! Ho, ho, ho. ONTV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and non-linear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Welcome back to Klaus to the Heart Live on ONTV. I'm Jason Klaus. We certainly appreciate you tuning in here tonight. Very special episode here. I'm with Quad L. Edwards, my buddy Q, as we call him. And, um, you know, we've, we've sat here for the better part of 45 minutes. And it, was a quick uh, 45 minutes. it did go by <laughs> fast. I was like, I, I keep looking at, at the time cue and I'm like, Dang, man, this is <laughs> this is real, really rolling right along. But along with things with Thanksgiving, and let let me say right, right out of the bat, you know, right 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 out of the gate here with this segment, you know, we want to wish you and your family the the safest and happiest of holidays. Um, as we come as we come into next Thursday and beyond. Um, and uh, here's here's my cheap plug. Next month we we will be back here for what is 
r really a doubleheader weekend for me. Uh, Friday, December the 10th, I will be back here for Klaus of the Heart Live on ON TV. And then the next night, live on December the 11th, that will take place in this studio, will be the Michigan Wrestling Organization Christmas Clash event. So we're very much looking forward to awesome. bringing the MWO back to ON TV on December the 11th. But, um, Q, with Thanksgiving, we talked a lot about traditions. Now, with you and with me and for millions of people around the world, there is a tradition that takes place around this time every year that we generally very much look forward to. Absolutely. Um, it started out on the actual day of the holiday, and then it got mm -hmm. moved to the day before, and now it's, you know, for the last uh, several years, it's been the Sunday before the holiday. I'm, of course, referring to the Survivor Series. <laughs> 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 now, I, I said, uh, when, when, you, when you were on here in August, that we were going to have to, you know, find some time to talk about pro wrestling, because Q and I are very much, very much big wrestling fans. And for us as kids, the Survivor Series uh, pay-per-view from the WWF, and now it's WWE, was such a huge part of our of our traditions. Was was it that oh, way with absolutely. you? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I love that. That's probably my uh, second or third favorite pay-per-view mm -hmm. of, of the year. Yeah, probably behind Mania and yep. the Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble, yeah, okay. you got it. <laughs> yep. I, I'm not mad about it. Um, the, the Survivor Series, you know, it's for the longest time, and, and even now in this day where if you watch a WWE product, or I guess any mainstream product right now, so mm -hmm. much of it looks the same. So much of it doesn't, because back then when, when the Survivor Series became a thing, um, it stood out on its own. It had its own yeah, it aura, did. right? It did. Now, I was in the Joe Louis Arena. In uh -oh. 1991, this in, by, th this was the first year that it had been moved off of Thursday, and it became a Wednesday night pay per view the night before nice. the the holiday, and that was the night that um, the Undertaker won the WWF title from Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan, yeah. And uh, it's a quick sidebar: I have seen Hulk Hogan, who is my favorite wrestler, you know, obviously. Every time I've seen him live, he's lost. <laughs> I have never seen him win a match live in person. Wow! Like every, like, and it's all happened at the Joe Louis Arena. So I don't know what, and I'm so I'm glad that building's gone. It, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, here. it's not kind of hot. Um, <laughs> as as, um, as a wrestling fan and with somebody that has an appreciation for the lineage and the history of the Survivor Series. What do you have a favorite moment or two that when you think about this show? or this this pay-per-view event a course over the course of a 30 plus year history do you have a favorite moment of that i have a couple <laughs> uh i remember i can't remember if it was 96 or 97 when they did the uh the wild card rule and they and they kind of mixed up the, the the teams and i can't remember exactly who was on those teams but uh i remember you know razor ramon and and uh uh, I think Owen Hart. They were all on like one team. Right. It was like the heel. They mixed up the they heels. Mixed, and the, yeah. yeah. It was like a wild card. Ninety five, uh, I believe that. Ninety five. That yeah. was. Yeah. Yep. I, I, I remember that one. That was uh, because how wild it was. But uh, one of my favorite, my favorite matches, matches of uh, all time for uh, the Survivor Series concept was the two thousand and three. Um, when Stone Cold's career was on the line. Mm. He was standing on the sideline. Yeah. And Shawn Michaels was, he was a bloody mess, and he was getting Got beat up. Got his by, rear end Oh, kicked. my goodness, getting beat up by Christian and Jericho. And, oh, man, it, it was a lot of action in that one. And that was my first time really seeing uh, one, of, one of my favorite in-ring performers, RVD. Okay. Battle Creek, Michigan. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> RVD in a in that type of match, right? So I was like, oh man, you got to show up, man. Show up and show them people what the, what you can do, you know. So I I enjoyed that match from top to bottom, man. I was on my the edge of my seat. It uh, 
it has provided some amazing moments as as wrestling fans, and it has really, it's it has, and even here and now, like for a while, they got away from that traditional yeah, they did. elimination tag concept. Yep. So I was happy that they were, that they did bring that back. You know, oftentimes it's a Raw versus SmackDown ty type yeah. of gimmick. Um, which I really think, if you're going to do a brand split, that's really the way you, they should be handled. Yeah. The, the best from one show versus the best of the other. But for me, man, it all comes down to that very first one in 1987. Richfield Coliseum in Richfield, Ohio. It actually ho hosted the first two of them. And, um, you know, the whole five-on-five five thing, Hulk Hogan's team, which was an all-star. You had Paul Orndorff, Don Morocco, oh my um, I mean, Bam Bam Bigelow, and Ken Patera. And then you had Andre the Giants team, which, you know, Andre, Bundy, uh, One Man Gang, The Natural, Butch Reed, uh -huh. and Ravishing Rick Rude. How many movies. Hall of Famers oh, are in that, in, in oh, that one goodness. match, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it really, <coughs> pardon me, it really made the Survivor Series what it would become, especially for us as fans. Because yeah, I have the DVD set. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, l listen, Q, I know that this is your your second time on here, and I knew that we were going to talk about Thanksgiving and all that and, and all the traditions and stuff like that. And I also realized that we were going to be talking about the Survivor Series because it has been such a huge part of a lot of, of family tra you know, traditions, especially when it was held on the Wednesday or Thursday of, yep. of the actual holiday. Like, you know, fa families would center their whole gathering around, you know, we're going to eat at this time, so we have time to take our naps, and then the pay-per-view comes on at mm -hmm. what, what, whatever time it came on. So um, <coughs> I really wanted to, to do something to kind of commemorate this here tonight. And to show my my appreciation for you because of like I am a very blessed man, and it, I don't need a holiday for me to realize that. Like I realize, you know, that there, there are people in, in in my life that just they mean the absolute world to me. You know, and and some, you know, they they really have stepped up and gone to bat for me or just bare minimum su supported me when seemingly nobody else did right. or would or, or, or what have you. In the grand scheme of things, Q, you have always been a big su supporter of my cause here, whether Absolutely. it's the podcast, whether it's what we do here on ONTV, and I really, really appreciate that. Like, you just have no idea... Um, what that means and 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 along with that like i'm i'm very much a person that likes to show my appreciation in one way or or the other now a lot of times i will go on the air when i'm recording a podcast or something and i'll i i do what's called like spotlights segments where i will you know focus on a person or a group of people that have made a significant impact or uh, you know on some sort of difference in my life and um, I find as I get older and I find as I you know as, especially as I'm as I'm navigating through these new endeavors and things of this nature with motivational speaking and mm -hmm. things of that um, you know I realize I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing without the support of amazing people, of awesome people, and you certainly fit fit that bill. So I have something for you. Uh oh. To kind of tie <laughs> e everything in here. Okay. Okay. N nothing huge, <laughs> but knowing um, knowing who you are, knowing how much you mean to me on on a variety of levels, and knowing. Um, our our appreciation for the traditions of holidays, mm -hmm. more specifically, you know, our fandom for pro wrestling. I found something I thought would kind of tie everything in together. Are you ready? Uh, do we need a drum roll? No, we don't need a drum roll. <laughs> I, I, I didn't wrap it, so I just put it in that bag Oh, there. man. You guys ready? <laughs> uh, I'm going to turn it this way. 
And I'm gonna go like this, here we go. Oh my goodness. Wow. So, oh, Hugh man. and I are huge fans of The Undertaker. That's my guy. Yeah, I know he is. <laughs> uh, the Undertaker, now when, when I think about the Survivor Series, he's the first guy that comes to mind because oh, yeah. he made his World Wrestling F Federation debut at the Survivor Series in 1990. And nobody knew at that point just how big of a star he, he would become. And I would argue that in terms of gimmicks, in terms of characters, The Undertaker is the greatest of all time. Oh, in hands the history down. of professional hands wrestling. Hands down. This particular action figure is part of the collector's edition to commemorate his, his 30 years as, wow, a, as a character in, in WWE. And I, you, know, you and I have, have talked about what a big fan we are of his work and what he brought to to the to the table. So I saw this um, a few weeks ago, and it was right right after you and I had talked about oh, you, you coming back on the show because I wanted to, to do something for you. I appreciate and, that. And uh, I was like, oh well, <laughs> there it is. That's perfect. I appreciate that. So now I appreciate you, man, because it, it really it really having your support and. You know, it's it's immeasurable. You know, it, it 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 really is. And there's there's not very many people that I feel like I can wholehearted wholeheartedly put in in that umbrella. You know what I mean? Because I'm I'm finding as I'm as I move along here, that, like I realize who is truly in my corner and who really oh, yeah. isn't. And you've always been been in my corner. Absolutely. And, and I really appreciate that. And I want to wish you and, and your family the absolute best of, of this holiday co you know, coming up next week and, so much, and, and beyond. And I know we're going to see each other every day because we, we work, we work on, on the line together yeah. there in Flint. But Same line. Yeah. Just, <laughs> I mean, I can see you. I mean, I can't, I can't talk to you, but I, I, right. I, I can see you down there. I'm down the street. Yep. yep. <laughs> so uh, for everybody else, we certainly appreciate you taking time out of your day here to give this a watch. I, I want to express my uh, my appreciation for, for Joe Johnson, Ian Locke, and all of the great people here at Orion Neighborhood Television, and for all, all of you who took the time to watch this. So for Q and I, um, happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you right back here next month on December 10th with Klaus to the Heart Live on ONTV. TV.